So we're going to put it to practice, making sure we can analyze these examples and come up with some good part writing. So I'm going to do this for you fairly quickly and see if you can follow along. A major is our key, a five chord. E and G sharp, that means I need another E and a B. I'm going to put the E here, and I'm going to put the B here, giving myself not some space to work with. I then go to the one six chord, I have a C sharp, I have an A, I need an E, and then I can double something. I'm going to try to double the A. E is my common tone, and I can move by step to an A, doubling my soprano, which is always my first choice, but not a requirement. But here, I get the best of both worlds. G sharp, B in the soprano, I need an E. There's my common tone. And here, I might need to do some things a little different. I'd like to, if I can, I double the B? Uh, yeah, problem is, I have A, A, that would go to B, B. That would be parallel octaves, and I don't want to do that. I can't double the G sharp because that's the leading tone. So my only other choice is to double the E. So I could jump up and double the E. Now that's, usually I don't like to make those kinds of jumps. I don't like to make those kinds of jumps. Because usually that's, that's where trouble starts. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and I'm going to change. I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to go up to a C sharp here. So I'm going to have a different doubling. And then I'm going to step back to the B here. So sometimes I'll, you have to take a step back just to make sure your voice leading keeps moving forward smoothly. Here we have A, C sharp, that means we need an E, common tone, and double the A. There we go. So you see what I did is I, I mean, it, it, I could have made it work, but I just don't want to risk it. I just don't like making lots of big leaps. Now, if I were to go and try to do something that's really going to be interesting and dynamic musically, I might do that, because leaps can be very exciting. But right now, my main goal is smooth voice leading. So that's how I would complete that example. Here, this next one is in B minor. We have the B, we have the F sharp, I need a D, I'll put that here, and I need another B. Put that there. Here's a four chord. You haven't seen this before. This is a, a major four chord. But four is supposed to be minor in a minor key. What's going on? You're not authorized to do this, but you do, do need to be able to analyze it. And then you have this ascending melodic line of so, la, ti, do, like the melodic minor, ascending melodic minor. You can sometimes put four as a major in a minor key. We can talk about that exception and how that works, but that's, that's what's going on. But we can analyze it just the same. Uh, we need, we have E, we have G sharp, we need a B and an E. So B, common tone, step up to an E. This is a third, so parallel <clears throat> thirds are not a problem, I'm happy. Seven diminished six, I'm never going to double the leading tone, so I'm not going to double the soprano. I need an E, common tone, and a C sharp. Well, I can move by step, so that's nice and easy. B, B, I need D, and I need F sharp. So if I go... This goes up to D, and this steps up to F sharp. I have myself a complete chord there. Um, here, let's compare and compare. Let's do this one just for three voices. So here's the same example. How would it look different if we did it for three voices? We have the E, we have the G sharp. I'd like a B to make a complete chord. Here we go to 1-6. We have the C-sharp, we have the A. Now, E is the note I would need to complete the chord, but that creates a, again, that makes things have a, a, a leap. And I'm not sure I want to do that. But I think I do. I think I do. I think a leap of a fourth is acceptable here. It doesn't create any parallels because the bass is going this way. We have contrary motion with the upper voices. And this is a six moving to a fourth, so it's not a parallel fifth or a parallel octave or anything that's going to be problematic. That said, I don't want to leap again right away. G sharp, B, I need an E. Well, see how convenient that is. I don't need to leap at all. I can just maintain that as a common tone. And then here, 
A, C sharp, I need an E. So you'll notice that it looks very similar. And you could conceivably make it the same by making that an E as well. Because you can have a double root and a third in a three voice texture. But here, I would opt for a more of a complete chord and have the leap. Again, this is a three voice example. We have F, we have A flat. The missing note is a C. Put that here in the alto. Seven diminished six, we have a G, we have a G. We need a B flat and we need an E natural. But we can only get one of those notes because it's three voices. Which one do we leave out? Well, it can't, it can't be the, the E natural because that's the root of our chord. And otherwise, how would we know it's a seven chord at all? So we're going to put the E natural right there. And you'll make sure you do not forget to raise the leading tone, which is what you do by putting that natural sign. One six, we have the A flat. We have the F. We could, we could double the F right here and have smooth voicing, or we could jump back down to the C to have a complete chord. Since this is a leading tone in an inner voice, we have that option. If that E natural was in an outer voice, leading tone in an outer voice must resolve up. This isn't in an outer voice, we have the option. I always choose complete chords. Almost always, at least. So I jump back down to the C. Two diminished six, B flat, G, we need a D flat. This is a fourth, moving to a fourth. This is a third. These are parallel first inversion chords. If you see it, everything moves parallel. But because it's a first inversion chord, the intervals above the bass are six and three. So six and three, we don't have five, we don't have eight. Those are the numbers that if you move parallel are a problem. So parallel first inversion triads sound awesome. And we have that right here. Then finally we have C, E natural. We could use a, a G or a C. Now I just said a second ago, I always go for a complete chord. So that would mean that this D flat would have to jump to a G. But D flat to G is a tritone. It would be a diminished fifth. A, and, and I don't want le melodic leaps of a diminished fifth. So in this case, for, because I don't want to create melodic leap issues, I'm going to have the double root and a third for voice leading. Not only is it smooth, it avoids a, a leap of a diminished fifth of a tritone. And there you go. You have a bunch of examples on how you would do these correctly with that thought process of what should be going through your head as you're making these different decisions. All right. Thank you very much.